glad that she wants to do it and she's really enjoying it. It's a good project for us to do together. Uh, so we're enjoying that. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, seeing these people in the crowd, these are very, very smart people. Okay. These are people that they're, they're, they're not, uh, dumb people at all. And they're not naive as to politics and the way the world is actually run. They're very, uh, understand about the 1%. They understand about police brutality. They understand about all these things. And none of them think Bernie's perfect either. I think a lot of these people are thinking the exact same way I'm thinking. Okay. And, uh, and, and had the same purpose in mind. It's also a fun crowd to hang out with. Okay. Especially if you're like a single guy, there's a lot of really, really pretty girls at these events. You know, when there's not that many guys, and a lot of the guys there are gay. Okay, so you gotta, you know, you gotta really. The odds are really good at these Bernie events. Uh, so I would recommend uh, people to to go down there and hang out and check them out and support. Okay, so that's as much as we're trying to do here uh, with the whole uh, Bernie Sanders thing. Um. Oh, you know what? Good time to take a commercial break, uh, and then we'll get back with more. Of uh, the after show, we had our guest tonight, which was uh, Ilyasa Shabazz, uh, the daughter of uh, Malcolm X, uh, the third oldest daughter. Her books are uh, Growing Up X, X a Novel, and Malcolm Little, the Boy Who Grew Up to Become Malcolm X. And uh, what we'll do is um, those books, the links are on the, uh, the Opera Room Report blogspot.com and also oppermanreport.com uh, in the bookstore. And when you go to oppermanreport.com, don't forget to check out the members section, okay? And uh, we really need the support. The support's been uh, been winning away, uh, even though I'm doing more shows. I got a show coming up on Monday. I'm going to be recording with uh, Dr. Peter Dale Scott about Adnan Khashoggi. And he's, he has an upcoming event he's going to be doing about JFK assassination. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, and, and a lot of his, he has a lot of stuff that he's done about 9-11 and, and uh, the oil industry and stuff like that. So we're going to be getting in with him as well on Monday. Peter Dale, Dr. Peter Dale Scott. Okay, we'll be right back after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Pacific West Bamboo, your premier source for sustainable building material. They provide construction grade and craft grade bamboo material for all your indoor, outdoor, and gardening needs. Uh, contact them for event planning and display building as well. 503-839-8126. Or you go to their new website, PacificWestBamboo.com. Or you can contact them on Facebook at Pacific West Bamboo. That's 503-839-8126. Amanda from Pacific West Bamboo was our first sponsor. Uh, she's been so good to us, uh, so please support her in return. I want to make everybody aware of our new member section at www.oppermanreport.com. Uh, you can go there and sign up for a monthly, quarterly, or yearly subscription. You can even purchase episodes one by one. Uh, you get full access to brand new original content, new guests, new uncensored interviews, my own investigations and reports, and we're going to be adding uh, sections with documents, images, police reports, uh, either provided by myself or by my guests or for my own investigations, my own reports. Uh, so you can go to oppermanreport.com and you can sign up there tonight. You can start listening tonight. Straw Man. I want to mention Straw Man. Straw Man is a band uh, out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, they're good friends at the Opperman Report. Uh, they're a trio of guys who share the same mindset uh, most of us here do, and they put that energy into their words and music. Uh, so check them out at uh, strawmanmusic.com and drop them a line uh, to let them know that you heard them here on the Arpman Report. Uh, we'll be doing a, an interview with Sean Duffy soon. You can get an autographed copy of my book, How to Succeed as a Private Investigator, by visiting my PI website, emailrevealer.com. We also offer a computer and cell phone forensics. We can recover deleted text messages to uncover infidelity. Uh, we, can, uh, we offer asset searches, locates, email tracing, background reports, and we can even trace your spouse's email address back to internet dating websites to catch them cheating online. 
You can reach us at 800-572-9762, or you can email me at emailrevealer at AOL.com. New World Mexican Women. Everyone loves the New World Mexican Women and their, their line of fine, handcrafted, authentic ju Mexican jewelry of stone mosaic and abalene stone inlay. In their first book, titled New World Mexican Women, available on lulu.com, uh, they teach you how to make this jewelry, and they have a collection of love letters to their men from their hometown that have immigrated to the United States to find work. Uh, they have also published a new book entitled Azucina to the Rodeo, it's about a young girl that falls in love with a rodeo bull rider, and she runs away with him uh, without telling her family. You can find the New World Mexican Women by Googling New World Mexican Women, and you can ask them about the, their deals on wholesaling, their fine jewelry, and all of the other projects that they have going on. Uh, if you'd like to have your business or website advertised here and promoted all over the world on dozens of stations every day, give us a call at 800-572-9762 or email Opperman Report at gmail.com. And now back to our show. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Hey, what do you think of those chaga mushrooms? Huh? It's a mushroom that grows way up in the northern forest. Native Americans and Russians have been using it for hundreds of years. It's not the kind of mushroom you eat, but you make a tea with it, and it's loaded with polysaccharides and other unique phytochemicals. And it's supposed to be very tasty, too. You wouldn't guess you were drinking mushroom tea. By the way, Chris says he mixes it in with his coffee. He makes some kind of coffee out of it with the chaga mushrooms in his coffee. Uh, the folks over at Ch uh, michiganmushrooms.net have been harvesting chaga for years, and they've built a great reputation for having the best quality mushrooms for the best prices. And these guys are recognized as experts in the field of mushrooms. Uh, check out and like their Facebook page, Michigan Mushroom LLC. And michiganmushrooms.net is their website. You can go on there right now tonight. You could have mushrooms in your tea by Monday morning, Tuesday morning, probably. You know, the quickest you can probably get it. Um, also, too, you know what, guys? Um, do me a big favor. Uh, go to, when you're on Facebook, uh, like the Opperman Report Facebook page as well, too, because it helps me reach more people. And uh, all the stations we're on, like Wolf Spirit and Awake and PSN and these new guys over at uh, Mutual Broadcast Network, uh, like their page, too. That helps out because um, when I promote the shows, it reaches more people. You know, it'll go on your page, you know, and, and other people see it. And by the way, too, I know I tag everybody a lot uh, when I'm promoting the shows, and sometimes I lose track because I'm posted on all different stations, so I'll tag the same person sometimes twice, sometimes even three times. I'm really sorry about that, guys, but, you know, it's, it's a lot of, you know. You guys know I'm making a mess out of this whole time. <laughs> I can hardly keep up with what I'm doing here, and I'm making a big, giant mess. So I forget what we were talking about, um, but I think we were talking about uh, uh, Donald Trump, uh, Trump a little bit there, and about the Bernie uh, events, and the Bernie girl is going to call in. So Tuesday night, I guess it was, because uh, now we we get uh, these updates because we're, we're getting active here locally because Vic's you know turning into a teenager I and mean, she wants to protest, and we were invited to go out to the. Um, I'm also trying to do more local shows and promote local activists and artists and uh, people, models here, you know, and uh, uh, filmmakers and people in the, the arts, you know. So um, we were invited to go out to the, uh, the march to raise the minimum wage for $15. So we got our signs. Vic made a sign. We were rushing around to do it to us right after school. Uh, so I had to pick up Vic from school, and we had to go get a sign and some markers. And she's doing the sign in the cars. We're driving over there. It's all the way to the other end of town, in downtown Las Vegas by Fremont Street, and in front of City Hall. So there's a pretty big crowd. You know, it's about 500 people there. Um, all you know, good-looking crowd. You know, bright people, well dressed. Uh, and with, uh, with someone there from uh, the union, the uh, you know. I forget which union, 
but uh, there was someone there from one of the unions. It was like one of the culinary unions or something like that was there, or Teamsters, something like that. Um, yeah, it was the, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters was there. Local senator was there, and some local activists were there as well. And then there were some Bernie representatives, the people representing the Bernie campaign. So uh, a photographer came over from the Review Journal, and he took a picture of me and Victoria. And uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, we were in the, the local paper here, the Las Vegas Review Journal, I posted the picture, and um, you're going to see my face, you know, and I'm looking at the crowd, I'm kind of, uh, you know, a cynical, older looking guy, you know, and then you see Victoria, you know, standing next to me, holding her little handmade sign, you know, and she's sort of a much more optimistic and uh, hopeful of what can be accomplished with these kind of uh, uh, actions, you know, taking these kind of street activists, you know, activist kind of uh, protest rallies kind of stuff. Uh, and there were a lot of young people there, and there were a lot of older, experienced uh, uh, radicals as well. Uh, a couple of things I noticed from my old days of being, you know, involved in these kind of things is one is that the sound system is so much uh, better quality uh, than it was when I was a kid, you know, really, um, incredible sound quality, the way they have these, these things set up today. And also the quality of the signs and the posters, they have balloons, they have all this kind of stuff, this kind of prep work that they didn't have when I was a kid. That's for sure. Okay. Um, another thing is the obedience of the crowd and the cooperation with the police. It, that's come a long, long way from when uh, when I was a kid in high school and in my early 20s when I was doing this kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of communication between the protesters and the police, the organizers. Uh, there's a much more uh, active parade marshals, you know, that uh, keep track of uh, the marchers and stuff like that, keep everybody on the sidewalk and all that kind of stuff. So we, we all get together and we start marching down. We march down from City Hall to Fremont Street, chanting through the streets. It was a huge crowd, about 500 people, and really stretched out. And when we got to Fremont Street, everybody was so supportive, all the tourists and cab drivers and bus drivers and all, all the people in the street. Everybody was extremely supportive of the $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, now, what we did, this is a pretty bold, bold uh, crowd because they went right into one of the casinos. Uh, which is all private property. They can kick you off, you know, for any reason. And they went and marched right into one of the McDonald's in the casino, and we held the end of the rally was held in there. Uh, and uh, again, everybody in the casino was so supportive, you know, raising their drinks to us and saluting us, you know, and coming over with, you know, big smiles on their faces. Everybody was really happy. Now, one thing I noticed that was interesting is the casino security guards and the cops that were in the casino were really nervous. <laughs> you know? This was a man, this was a mild crowd. This was a cooperative crowd. It was a lot of home care workers. You know, the, the, the myth about this uh, $15 an hour minimum wage thing is that these are all fast food workers. Very, uh, the, the majority of the workers making minimum wage in this country are 77% white single mothers. Okay? And they're not working in, all in fast food. They're, they're home care workers. They're receptionists, clerical workers in office, temp workers, cashiers, big box stores, Walmarts, supermarkets, cashiers. All those things now are all minimum wage. So, and so they, there's this myth out there where they say, well, you, they want $15 an hour to flip a burger. And that's, that's a high school job for high school kids. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. When you have your kids in daycare, you have kids that are in a daycare center, they're making minimum wage there. When you uh, salespeople who make sales from telemarketers, all these jobs are minimum wage jobs. Okay, it's not just you can't replace. See, the myth is, well, they're gonna these uh, fast food burger flippers. They're gonna get their jobs replaced by you're gonna go in there, you're gonna be able to order by pushing buttons on a computer keyboard, and then they won't have jobs. They're, they're talking themselves out of jobs. It's all nonsense. That's a distraction. Uh, they're lying to you. Okay. You cannot replace the guy that mops the floors 
over at McDonald's.